Hey everyone, Sragna here and welcome to another video. As you know, every month ESL has a tournament to qualify to Poland where the top four teams from the in-game CWL and the top four teams from the, this tournament meet up for a place in the World Championships. Today I'll be bringing a recap of the first day action for the three Aussie teams, two resistant teams and Aussie Alliance. Before we start, if you like this type of content, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel and share us around to make sure the channel increases in size and I can bring you even more content like this. So we will start with Resistance ESL in the round of 512. A lot of teams get a default win as there aren't 512 teams. However, we ended up facing uh, Deep. These are the two teams. And uh, on the stats, we ended up getting four three stars and they didn't get any. However, as you can see, they did use eight attacks, which disqualified them straight away. However, we still continue with the war and uh, we ended up winning to go to the next round. As you will see, they had a very rushed bases and only the number one base wasn't completely rushed. That one was attacked by Top Gun Warrior, so I will be showing you his 3 star. These were all of their bases. And uh, we'll dive in now. So here's Top Gun Warrior coming in with a Yeti Smash. He's got a 5 healers and an Ice Golem. Puts the Warden up at around the 1 o'clock position just to create a bit of a funnel. Uses the Super Wall Breakers to open the Eastern Side compartment. He's going to be sending. Uh, something else to create the funnel there and then his idea is just to send his main army in the middle directly towards the town hall so he puts the ice golem and the king with the siege barracks set behind so the warden has created enough of the funnel on one side the king is creating the other side of the funnel puts the jump in to send his main army in the cc comes out is an ice golem witch and a yeti puts the poison down They'll head in, uses the earthquake to open the middle walls just to open up the whole base. Uses the wooden ability as they're going through the scatter shot. The hogs from the siege barracks come out with the RC there to complement them. The town hall finally goes down. There's only that second scatter shot and the eagle that have to go down. Uh, the rest of the army is coming in. The hogs are getting rid of that single inferno. To the south, uh, allowing the RC to get rid of it completely now. And uh, now he only has that western compartment and half of the northern compartment left. He still has a lot of bowlers, and yet he's left. Uh, the queen breaks through the wall and starts getting rid of the northern side, while the Yetis and the RC are getting rid of the western side with the loons as well. The RC finds the tornado trap. And now it's just pretty much clean up. He still has three goblins that he hasn't used that he can use for clean up, clean up as well. And uh, this is how Top Gun Warrior ended up three star in this base against Mali from Deep. After winning, we moved to the round of 256, where we ended up facing Nishang Dance, uh, one of the best teams in Clash at the moment. We ended up losing 13-11 to them. We ended up getting one three-star, but they had three on us. Uh, my base managed to stand and only got 60%, uh, which is really good. However, they brought their game and they ended up beating us 13-11, uh, as you've seen. So I'm gonna be showing our triple that we had and I'm also going to be showing the three triples just so you can see the type of attack is that they are they're really nice okay so here comes Timmy he's coming in with the Yeti smash with two witches he also brings four hogs he starts with his warden walk around 230 area just creating a bit of a funnel there he also brings a couple of jumps and a couple of freezes in this army so let's see what he does here so he continues with his warden walk he might want to get that scatter shot maybe no he pulls the yetis just a little bit too early probably he could have waited a little bit and uh, let the warden take the scatter shot 
Uh, King is on the North Korean, the other side of the uh, funnel. He brought the first super wall breaker in for the first wall. Now he puts the jump in the first layer in the middle. This is the warning ability. Scottish Air goes down, the CC is going down. There's just a lava that will be stalling his queen there in the middle. But uh, he puts a second jump in so that everyone goes towards the town hall. Uh, all the bullies and yetis bring it down. Thankfully, they don't walk under the town hall blast. But uh, he pretty much has lost uh, all of his bowlers. Now he only has that P.E.K.K.A that whizzes on the outside with the R.C. Just uh, clearing that side. He sends his hogs uh, on the 8 o'clock area. Just to get rid of a couple more defenses there. The single is locked on the R.C. Uses the ability and freezes the single which is really good. The hogs from the siege barracks finally come out. Which are going to be helping... Uh, cleared the rest of the defenses left with the RC still alive. Uh, really nice uh, back end hogs here. Now he only has that cannon and archer tower left. The RC is still full health. He still has one freeze. Uh, he his queen is still alive. The pega is still alive. Really nicely done by Timmy. So that was a uh, three star. Now I'm gonna show you the three three stars from uh, Dance. And so the first one, he's coming in with a hybrid. Uses the blimp to go into that Wistar Inferno just to create a bit of a funnel for his queen walk. The CC also gets lured. And he's using a minion and a loon to create the other side of the funnel for the queen. Now after that, the queen goes towards the CC and the defending king. Puts the poison down, so now uh, she's getting rid of that. Sends another minion just to create that bit of a funnel, but the expo gets rid of it. So with that elixir open there, there could have been a possibility for the queen to walk, but then the gold storage and the elixir storage are bringing the queen back up to where he wants her to go. Uh, there's the enemy queen and a single inferno which might stall her but he also brought two super wall breakers so he puts the uh, rage in, uses the freeze to freeze the queen and the single inferno, the super wall breaker go in so his intention is for the queen to get rid of that town hall now she steps in and starts hitting it, puts the king on the 9 o'clock position just to create the other side of the funnel and then he starts bringing a few miners, now he sends the, the rest of the hybrid in, in between where the blimp created the funnel and the king creating the other side of the funnel now the entire hybrid goes straight into the center of the bench which is what he wants, this is a wooden ability beautifully against that scatter shot hits now he's got this very heavy damage area, the two scatter shots and the eagle, but the whole hybrid is in there, uses the queen ability, the queen is going to be able to take the other scatter shot, the hogs and miners get rid of the eagle and now he just has to trim the outside of the base. He still has his RC ability, he still has a super wall breaker there. This is a ability to get rid of those defenses. The last Tesla goes down and now it's just clean up. Use the Super Wall Breaker to help the Queen get out and help with the cleanup. And uh, this is how they got this base. Really nice and smooth attack. That's why I want to show them uh, that the really good attack is. Now we've got uh, the second triple. They're coming in with 25 minus and uh, jump. So he starts his swing walk on the south, uses a uh, whiz to create a bit of a funnel for her, very nice and cheap um, uh, funneling. Now he puts the giant and the RC to get rid of some of the defenses there and make sure the queen goes into the base which is what he wants. That multi inferno if it had been single it would have gotten rid of that RC but as a multi she didn't go down and the RC manages to go all the way in and get rid of that multi inferno. Sing the single got frozen but the queen goes in gets rid of it now she has access to the center of the base she's gonna be getting rid of that expo the CC comes out 
which is a lot of um, arches however he put his poison down so that's gonna get rid of that the witch is walking outside of the poison but she walks back in and then there's also the ice golem which is gonna stall her for a little bit he still has two heals for his manas he uses the last rage on the queen now the witch is stalling her for a little bit so he puts the siege barracks and the king on the nine o'clock area just to create that bit of the funnel to make sure the manas go straight into the town hall which is what he wants the queen can't reach the eagle so it will go down uses the freeze for the expo and the town hall now that it's activated this is the warden ability really nicely done now he's got two scatter shots at the end and his queen ended up getting rid of the defending queen uh, he still has one more heal the hooks from the siege barracks come out so they're gonna be overwhelmingly overwhelming the defenses here at the back end or at least that's what he's hoping uh, uses the last heal for the minus and the hooks for that last scatter shot Minus ended up pathing some of them to the scatter shot, some of them to the outside defenses. Uh, they get rid of that last scatter shot, um, and now there's only just a few defenses left. The queen is still alive with full health. The healers had swapped to the minus, which kept them alive as well, and now they're just smacking through the rest of the base, just clearing it up. So nicely done. So we had a hybrid, we had a all minor attack, and now the their last triple was here, and it was against Yip with the Yetis. They also bring a uh, Pekka, so they start the wooden walk on the western side. He's gonna be getting rid of that entire western area. As you can see, there's a nice little corridor that goes all the way into the town hall. He's brought four earthquakes, so he's gonna be earthquaking there in the middle, opening the whole base. King to the north with the siege barracks and the Pekka is helping with the funnel on the northern side to make sure the Yetis and the Bullets go all the way into the center. As the scatter shot starts hitting the bullets, you want to use the wooden ability so that your bullets don't die. But scatter shots are there, so they're going to be able to get rid of them pretty quickly under the wooden ability. The CC comes out, uses the earthquake spell, uses the freeze for the town hall, and the uh, hogs from the siege barracks come out with the RC, and this base is getting smashed. This was a very nice and simple yeti attack as well and he only has those the tesla farm left uh, to the southwest the queen is there with the healers she's getting rid of those defenses rc and king are trimming the eastern side they're all gonna be meeting up into the south this is the queen ability he still has his rc ability and the freeze left with a couple of loons and um, the whiz and that's how they beat us and these were their three triples after beating us they faced existence another really good team and dance ended up beating them 15 10 so at least we put a better fight than existence uh they moved to day two where they will face golden x now to resistance coc they had a default win in the first round and faced brainwashes in the next round they ended up winning 13-10, they had 3 triples and a 93.6 destruction percentage. Triples came from Maestro, Nico and Gandalf. Okay, so we start with Gandalf. He's coming in with a hybrid against Koki from Brainwashes. So uh, he starts his uh, Queen Walk on the western side. He's already funneled both sides to make sure she goes in. He uses a Super Wall Breaker to go into that compartment. He used the uh, Sneaky Goblins to help her go all the way in. He uses a Freeze 
to freeze the single inferno and for her to keep going in towards that scatter shot uses the other uses the blimp in order to go for that other inferno and hopefully try to get a couple probably both scatter shots uh, the CC gets pulled I don't think they're gonna be able to get that second scatter shot no they can't really nice try uh, all three ice columns come towards the queen and uses the poison to start getting rid of them now uh, what else is he gonna do so the queen can reach the town hall if that's what he wants her to do so if he does that then the hybrid could be coming from the 10 o'clock area yeah he so he puts his king at 12 just to create that bit of the funnel the hybrid is coming in from that 12 o'clock area and they're gonna move straight into that scattershot inferno compartment the king triggers the tornado trap so now the hawks aren't gonna get stalled there and they can continue all the way straight in towards the eagle which you wanna get rid of as soon as you can uses the one ability to save the miners uh, the queen is shooting some of the miners they all go towards the queen and start hitting her the skeleton trap is gonna be stalling some of these miners for a little bit the RC comes out and there's a few loons there that are getting rid of uh, a couple of defenses in the perimeter He's got those bobs and the minions getting rid of all the trash from the outside. The RC and those loons are still going around. The miners are still in the middle, getting rid of the middle defenses. The last of the loons goes down. But now he uses the RC ability, gets rid of some of the defenses. There's only one cannon left, which the miners are about to get. Once they get rid of that, then the RC can help with the cleanup. Uh, so he's got all the babs up north and the RC getting rid of all the, the garbage and this was the triple, nicely done by Gandalf with his first triple of the day. So now we've got Nico coming in with the E-Drags and he's gonna be doing an E-Drag spam I believe so he puts the baby drag up north, puts the loons and E-Drags in with the slammer, uses the warning ability nice and early he puts a couple of the rages for them to move into the base. The king is around the 7 o'clock area, just creating a bit of a funnel. He wants the Edrex to stay in there. The queen goes and helps with the town hall. They bring it down. And now the Edrex just continue going in. They trigger the tornado trap. They're, most of them are in the middle. The slammer is still almost with full health. The CC of the Nice Golem comes out as the Queen triggered it. Freezes the enemy Queen and the Eagle. The Slammer finally goes down and the enemy Queen dies. Now the Edrex are stalled on the enemy RC. The enemy RC ends up killing our own Queen. Now he brings his own RC to trim that defenses from the north. He still has that e drag stalled on the king oh our queen is still alive she still had the ability so she managed to bring down the scatter shot the RC is still coming in and she still has her ability there's that single inferno left we have no more e drags the single is now stuck on the RC but the RC manages to bring it down and now it's just clean up of the buildings he still has 30 seconds left and uh, this is a triple very nicely done, very close, but a triple is a triple. So now we've got to our third attack is Maestro coming in with the all minor attack. So let's see what he does. So he brings a couple of loons and his queen for a queen walk from the 10 o'clock area. Since the base is symmetrical, it really doesn't matter where the queen walks. She can walk north or she can walk to the west. She gets rid of that single inferno and a couple of Teslas that popped up. And she decides to move to the west. So he's going to be trimming that side. Then he can use his king and the siege barracks to trim the other side of the base. And then send his miners straight into the middle towards the town hall. So... The queen is still going around and so as you can see this is a queen walk he doesn't have any wall breakers to get uh, into any of the walls 
So I believe he's now put uh, his siege barracks up north. And uh, that with the king and a couple of wizards, he's trimming the defenses up there. Uses a rage for his queen to get rid of the CC, which is a lava and a couple of witches. That goes down, sends the minion just to get rid of the pups a little bit faster. Sends the miners in with the warden directly towards the town hall, puts the RC in. Town hall goes down, doesn't have to use the warden ability since they're miners. Now they're on the eagle. Get rid of it really quickly, uses the warden ability now that the miners are going to be getting hit by the scatter shots. The uh, hogs from the siege barracks come out to just help trim the defenses. The RC gets rid of one of the scatter shots, the miners get rid of the other one of the scatter shots, and they just keep going down. RC now is stalled on the skeletons, but only the cannon is hitting her. Now she uses the ability as she goes towards the single. The single is going to fry her, however, there's still quite a fair amount of miners getting rid of the defenses and the buildings surrounding the base so his queen is still alive he still has a heal left he had a freeze left which he uses in that single inferno that goes down and he's gonna be swagging that heal and gets a triple the last triple of this war against praying washes very nicely done Resistance COC then moved to the round of 128 against the clan Macedon. Another great performance from the boys saw them win 13-8. Defense was strong with three one-stars from the opposition. Gandalf got the six-pack for the day and Benji and Starvi finished the day with a triple two. From the opposition, even though they had the three one-stars, they also have a three-star by Minion Leah. So let's go on to the first attack and it is Gandalf coming in with the Idrax this time around. So this is a very common base, I've seen a lot on uh, Legend Leagues. So he puts his double rage, brings the loons with the Idrax, he's going to be putting the warden I believe yet yeah, behind. Usually they use the warden ability very nice and early, Gandalf is waiting for a little bit. Uses the warden ability there and uh, he will put one more rage that good chain is going to be getting rid of the eagle and a couple of scatter shots and the sweepers um, he ended up freezing both scatter shots with the sweepers which was really good now he sends the blimp behind the e-drax obviously the e-drax have already pulled all the seeking air mines so the blimp is safe to go all the way in puts the rage in the middle to make sure that that uh, town hall goes down due to the nerf for, from the yetis they do go down now he still has a fair bit of the base left brings the rc from the nine o'clock position just to trim some defenses and get rid of the couple of the ad's that are left the yetis in the middle are still alive the queen is still alive use her ability now she's going down to that expo he still has one e drag left and his rc and one yeti this one yeti is the MVP for this attack, he ends up stalling the expo and then have a look at the Yeti Mites. The Yeti Mites end up going towards the Inferno. That gives the RC time to bring it down and it goes down. Now the last uh, E-Drag standing plus the RC and the Warden end up cleaning the rest of the base. This attack was around 2 minutes long which is usually what happens when you come in with E-Drags. Now... We've got Starvi with his first triple of the day. He's coming in with the hybrid, so he starts his queen around the 5 o'clock area. He's got two super wall breakers as well. So, both expos hitting her. Now it's only one expo. He's got the healers under the rage, so it's gonna be able to keep her up. Puts the Yeti and the King around the 630 area just to make sure the queen remains within the wall CC comes out puts the poison down king gets rid of the enemy queen and starts trimming those ice golems 
so the queen doesn't get stole as much the witch is stalling her a little bit but she he manages to bring her down now the queen is in that inside wall so she's gonna be able to reach the eagle the expo and the witch tower puts the baby drag around the 230 area just to trim those defenses so his idea is to bring the hybrid directly into that single and king compartment now he brings the miners down once they're heading towards the defenses brings the hogs with the rc and the warden sadly the rc gets triggered by the single inferno very quickly he should have staggered it a little bit and maybe she would have survived now he sends the blimp in there's no uh sweepers pushing it back thankfully there was only one seeking air mine that hits it puts the uh, the rage down and the town hall goes down and they get rid of one of the scatter shots will they be able to get rid of the other one all the yeti mines come out and get rid of the other scatter shot really nice blimp there town hall and two scatter shots very nice value the hybrid is still going up north getting rid of those defenses on the last single infernal compartment the queen is streaming the defenses from the nine o'clock to 12 and they're gonna be meeting up around 11 30 finishing the base with the triple against minion leah which is the attacker that got the triple against resistance coc so stavi managed to uh triple this base nicely done and finally the last triple of this war was benji coming in again with the hybrid and a couple of super wall breakers puts the baby drag to trim some of the buildings there and funnel the queen in puts the king towards the enemy king and the super wall breaker for the queen to go into the town hall <coughs> so he's gonna have to use the king ability to get rid of the enemy king and waits for the auto ability now the tank hole goes down to the queen she also triggers the tornado trap which is really nice only one expo and the scatter shot is on her but he might have to use the rage again the triple ice golem is coming out thankfully she manages to hit the scatter first and it goes down before she has to deal with the ice golems put the siege barracks at three o'clock just to create that bit of the funnel on the other side hopefully the queen moves to the archer tower so that he, she can um, create a tighter uh, side of the funnel there for his hybrid he sends his minus in queen gets rid of that other expo puts the warden in now he brings his hogs the hogs from the siege barracks come out he puts his rc with the hogs from the siege barracks they're all going towards that single inferno the queen is still alive uses the warden ability and the first heal he still has two freezes and a heal uses the rage in the middle now the hogs are using it and the man is in the middle um he still has one freeze left uh, some of his troops are there in the middle trying to get rid of that inferno but the miners were getting stalled with the skellies the queen manages to get rid of the other multi inferno the rc gets rid of the eagle he puts the freeze for the rc he doesn't have much army left but he does have a lot of miners that went to the outside now if they go back into the inside they might help the RC is trying to get rid of the defending RC and she almost does it but she doesn't go down now the mana ends up killing um, the RC uses the queen ability now he only has that cannon a wish tower and a tesla left a lot of mana is left with the warden and the queen still alive the warden goes down but the base is tripled very nicely done by the team of resistance coc so resistance coc moved to day two in the round of 64 and are going against pt warriors from portugal from these 16 teams one will qualify it looks achievable for the boys uh, some of the teams in this bracket are war hunters the north watch torados fc torilla one of the Lubord war teams and one of the space station gaming teams as well good luck to the boys
Now to the final team, Aussie Alliance. They won by default the first round and faced Fun Lounge EHL in the second round. They ended up winning on percentage 11-11. Even though we had a one star, the boys were able to turn around and get the two triples needed to win. The team is uh, TK, Greg's Kingdom, Trento, Marty the Great and Cooper. Trento came close with a 98% but Cooper and Greg managed to get the two three stars needed to win. So here we go, the Greg's Kingdom coming in with the hybrid. He has 18 minus and only 9 hogs. Uh, he also has a super wall breaker and uses the sneaky goblins to uh, end the king to funnel the queen into that single infernal compartment. Uses super wall breaker so now there's nowhere to go but in for the queen. Puts the first rage in, the single is on her so he has to freeze it. Now she goes to the single inferno before she has to deal with the skelly traps which is really good. Now only the expo and the wish are hitting her, she's gonna be able to get rid of it. The king ends up going down, now the enemy king is going towards the queen with the scatter shot hitting her so he has to put that rage down. Now it puts the siege barracks on the eastern side. That way it will allow him to send the hybrid straight into the scatter shot and the eagle. Puts the last rage for the queen to get rid of that RC. Uh, he pre-drops the poison for all the archers coming out, puts the miners in with the RC and the hogs with the warden. I would have put the hogs first and then the RC. Now that goes down, the eagle goes down, they keep going straight into the town hall, uses the warden ability. That's going to be saving miners and hogs for the time being. The scatter shot is still hitting it, so once they go down, they might die. He puts the heal there to heal the miners that are on the scatter shot. Uses the RC ability that manages to bring the town hall finally. And now he only has that last compartment which looks really bad with that single inferno and a couple of whiz towers. A lot of splash damage. That his queen is still alive. She's getting rid of that expo and one of the whiz towers. The uh, hogs come in and uh, they die pretty quickly. He still has a few minus left which are going to be moving in towards the whiz tower which is really good. That's going to be stalling the single inferno for a bit. The, wee the warden ends up helping the miners getting rid of that single inferno and the archer tower and this is a three star by Greg's kingdom nicely done and the uh, second triple that they needed comes from Cooper he's bringing the hybrid as well but this time with 14 miners and 14 hogs puts the king and the baby drag to funnel the queen into that single inferno compartment Puts the freeze down. He still has one more super wall breaker. He uses it to open that uh, wall compartment. So he's hoping that the queen is going to move up once she deals with this uh, CC and the queen can go towards the town hall, I believe. Puts a couple of uh, hooks down to get rid of that archer tower so that she doesn't keep hitting uh, the healers. The queen ends up looping around and goes towards the town hall, which is what he wanted. Puts the freeze down to get rid of the town hall. Puts the siege barracks at 9 o'clock with one hog to make sure that the mortar doesn't hit the siege barrack building. And he can have as many wizards as he can from that siege barracks. Puts the hybrid down with the warden. Then the hogs and then the RC. They all go towards that scatter shot compartment. He uses the queen ability to get rid of the warden and the enemy queen. She's getting a lot of damage uh, from the two expos as well. Ben manages to survive and gets rid of one of the expos. Puts the heal down in the middle to, for the hybrid to get rid of that eagle and have enough health to get rid of that scatter shot as well which is the last uh, big defense. The Hawks end up getting rid of it, uses the RC ability that gets rid of that single inferno. Now there's only one multi inferno left, which is going to be really good. The RC can go through those defenses with no problems. 
<coughs> Mana is getting rid of the rest of the elixir containers from the base. He still has that CC in the middle of the base, but uh, he still has 30 seconds left on this attack. He's got quite a few miners that are gonna be able to go back into that clan castle and get rid of it. He's got one archer there, creating a little bit of damage, but uh, the rest of the army goes in, helps the archer out, and that base is down. So this was the first war. After winning, they moved to the third round against Andrew Max where there was another close war in stars. It ended up being 11-11. However, percentage-wise, Aussie Alliance had a lot more. This time around, the three star came from TK, who had one star in the previous round. I'm sure we will see more three stars from him rather than one stars in day two of this tournament. Trento again came close, this war with 97% two star. I'm sure we will see a triple from him on day two of this tournament, but uh, for the time being, let's see what TK did here against Mastery. Uh, he starts with his Queen Walk, he is also coming in with the hybrid 17 minus 13 Hogs, um, 3 Rages and 2 Heals. So he gets rid of that single Inferno up north and uh, he's gonna get his Queen to walk. Very symmetrical base, but uh, she's walking towards the north. The CC comes out again, three ice golems. I believe he's gonna want her to go back inside into that compartment and get rid of the tango. But let's see what he does to funnel her in. So, Queen getting rid of those ice golems. Now he puts the king and the siege barracks uh, over there at one o'clock and brings the hybrid in and puts the miners first to make sure they get rid of all the garbage defenses and hopefully the queen loops back inside now he brings the hogs and the warden in she loops back inside and gets rid of that town hall puts another heal inside uses the warden ability it encompasses the whole army even the queen and everything goes down, puts the rage in the center. Now the hogs from the siege barracks are coming out. He uses the RC to trim dead defenses on the three o'clock area to make sure that the hogs remain centered. The minus and the queen are getting rid of the western side. The RC is getting rid of the eastern side and the hogs are going around with the royal champ around getting rid of those defenses around the perimeter. They were all gonna be meeting in the six o'clock area uh, only a couple of wish towers left the archer tower and the cannon he still has a few minus the royal champ the queen with ability and this base is done with the triple nicely done by tk this win allowed aussie alliance to move to day two where they will face esl zero family a japanese clan these are the 16 teams looking for a ticket Aussie Alliance has a slightly more difficult bracket as it has a couple of tri gaming teams, Blaze JP, MCES, Team Kessel, and the team that disqualified my team, Dance. Hopefully, Aussie Alliance can avenge us in the round of 16. Well, that is the end of day one for our teams in the ESL tournaments. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button below and share us around. I will be bringing a recap for day two, which will be happening this weekend. Hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later with more amazing content. See ya.